Howdy folks, Gray Package arrived in the mail, which can only mean one thing, unboxing and review day today. This was brought about by XK's K123, a scale micro collective pitch AS350 heli that I had done a review on a couple of months back. I'll uh, link to the review below in the description if you wanted to have a peek. Really been enjoying this little micro, has certainly exceeded my expectations. So when Banggood offered to send me another one, I jumped at the opportunity. Now this is their XKK124, which is their scale EC145. So uh, let's get into this thing and take a peek at it. All of XK's micro collective pitch helicopters come in two versions or two formats. They have ready to fly, which comes with their little computerized six channel radio, or bind and fly, and that's what I chose. Uh, they also call it FTR, Futaba Transmitter Ready. And yes, the beauty with XK's helis is they uh, work off of uh, Futaba's SFH SS spread spectrum protocol. So if you've got a Futaba radio or a multi-protocol radio like a Jumper or any other OpenTX radio, uh, I'm going to be using my FR Sky Horus X12S and via the iRange X multi-protocol module. Packaging on all of XK's helicopters is really nice. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, SAB Goblins, as in the black box and the nice sharp graphics on them. So let's take a look at this thing. See if the detail is as nice as the K123. So it comes with very basic, um, poorly translated instructions. They'll get you going, but uh, the, probably the most useful thing on here is the parts list. So you know what replacement parts you can get for it. And yes, these are hobby grade. You can get replacement parts for it easily. These are being carried at more and more hobby shops now too, which is really cool to see. And I've become quite a big fan of XK helicopters, probably even more so than blades. Uh, but let's take a look at this thing up close. The detail is amazing. Now, unlike the K123, the K124 is actually themed off of a real paint scheme and real flying uh, full-size EC145. If we can bring a picture up of this thing. This is themed off SESCAM uh, Emergency Ambulance Air Service helicopter. It's very similar right down to the call sign ECKYU on their one helicopter. The scale detail is amazing. Lots of little rivets, all the little door hinges. And we'll get that right up close so you can see. Of course the quad rotor head. We'll have a look, better look at this when we take the mechanics out so we can have a quick peek at that. Um, of course, the one reason why the EC-145 is so popular with air ambulance service is this massive clamshell dual hatch door at the back. So they've modeled that in there quite nicely. The EC-145 is twin turbine, and they've got the two exhaust outlets there. If you really wanted to get this scale looking, you could, uh, you know, color those up with some uh, paint to uh, simulate exhaust staining. Uh, we've got the two VOR bar antennas on the back, or loop antennas. Uh, the horizontal stabilizer fins are not mounted yet, but they mount on there. We've got a boom strike protector on the back. And then the tail rotor is on the right side on the full-size EC145. It's, of course, on the left, but uh, we can overlook that. And even the uh, tail rotor, is, the tips are colored orange, just like on the full-size themed version of this uh, air ambulance. EC-145. Uh, cable cutters on the front, pretty fragile. On all my larger scale RC helicopters that have cable cutters, I always catch the lower one on something when I'm transporting it. You know, when I'm putting them in out of the vehicle, these always catch and break off. So I suspect that's going to happen with that one as well. And it has uh, little wiper blades on the front. And it even has a uh, landing light, a white landing light, which the uh, the K123 does not have. So the detail is actually even better. I didn't think it could get better than the uh, than the K123, but it is. Now well, let's look at what else we get with this thing. Well, we've had a peek at the heli. So we've got the four blade mounting screws. And eight blades so you get uh, 
four to put on the machine, and then four spares, which is customary with XK's helis. They give you a nice spare set of blades. Just comparing it to the uh, to the 123, these are a smaller blade by about 10 millimeters. So uh, these are a 120, 120 millimeter length blade. These are going to be 110s roughly. So this, if you want to size the helicopter by blade size, this would be a 110 size micro. It is a little bit smaller than the uh, the 123. Not by much, but if we line the heads up, you can see the 123 is a little bit longer. Uh, what else do we get in here? So there's our two horizontal stabilizer fins. I imagine these just, they just snap in. You could probably glue them in, but uh, then you risk them cracking when they crash. If they're just held in that way, if you hit something, you know, it's kind of a mechanical fuse and they'll pop out. I guess if you find they're falling out all the time, then you could use a little CA glue to uh, glue them in. Uh, it comes with a spare main gear. So if you strip any teeth off your main gear, you've got a spare and a spare tail rotor, which is nice, a little Phillips screwdriver, and a little 1.5 millimeter Allen key to put the blades on. These are little hex Allen hex heads for the blade screws. And lastly, in the box, we have our little charger. And it's a, just like every other XK helicopter, it is a USB. So you plug it into any USB power source, and the other end, it's just a barrel plug, plugs into there, and you've got two ports so you can charge two batteries. And I would highly recommend getting more than one battery, because that's the pain with little micros, short flight times, and yeah, waiting for batteries to charge is a pain, just like any electric helicopter, right? So the more batteries that you have, the more fun you're going to have. So let's get this thing apart. Uh, really easy to take the mechanics out. You've got these two screws on the side. Actually, let's pull the front off so you can see how that mounts. There's two little rare earth magnets that line up to two ones in the back on the back half of the fuselage, and that's what holds those in. And then there's a little clip on the front that snaps onto this little carbon bar right there. So it's a little bit more of a pain to fit than the other one. That's the one problem with uh, these little micro scale helis is fitting the fitting the front section of the fuselage on is a little bit tricky getting everything lined up properly these are just crammed full of electronics and mechanics so uh, it's pretty impressive now this one does have that little LED light in the front so you've got this little wire that plugs into the board that the 123 didn't have so we're going to pull that out right now and uh, like I said, we'll get the mechanics out. So just two screws on the side here, two on the bottom for the landing skids, and then two more on this side. And then there's a little carbon bar in here that we have to take out as well. And then the mechanics will come out. Okay, so we've got our six screws out and taken the landing struts off. This should just slide out. Also have to unplug the tail rotor wiring. And that goes in this second connector port. So this should just slide out now so we can take it really detailed uh, close-up look at the mechanics and that's one of the beauties with XK's helis is their mechanics they're very elegant uh, it's a good design 120 degree ECCPM swash plate you've got your uh, pitch and aileron servos on the back and your elevator input servo on the front uh, mechanical setup looks bang on out of the box the uh, servo Arms are all level, swash plate is level front to back, left to right pretty much. Might have to do some trimming, and swash height is giving us, looks like about zero degrees of pitch. There's very little pitch on the blade grips. As far as the rotor head goes, it's a metal hub with plastic blade grips, and they are being phased with the upper half of the swash plate via these washout arms. Brushless motor is offset to the side giving room for that front elevator servo and the main gear and pinion gear are at the bottom uses a metal main shaft, stainless main shaft, not carbon fiber 
which are prone to splitting, the carbon fiber ones, so it's nice to see that. Little uh, collar holding the mast in position, upper and lower uh, bearings. As far as the electronics go, customary XK. Uh, we've got the um, brushless ESC at the bottom, which is being fed direct through the battery. The uh, back is then feeding power to the main control board through this three-wire harness. Here's the battery. Let's take a peek at it. It is a 1S and it's 700 milliamp hours. That's the one negative I have with XK's helicopters. They all use different size batteries. You know, here's the 500 milliamp one for the 123. So, you know, it would fit in here, but you're going to get much shorter flight times and you're not going to fit this in the one in the 123 because it's too big. And these are a snug fit in the trays. There's very little wiggle room in there, so when you do get spare batteries for them, make sure that they are the correct size. We'll measure this one up. We're looking at about 43 long millimeters, about 24 and a half, 25 wide, and just over 8 thick. Well, there's a little plate in there that prevents it from sliding back too far and hitting the brushless motor which is an outrunner, so that's pretty important that the battery doesn't hit the outrunner. This is a 4-in-1 board. It contains the receiver. There's our little 2.4 gigahertz antenna right there. And it's also got the servo bus. You've got your three servo plugs there. And there's the ESC plug. Uh, you've got the uh, tail rotor mixer in here. And you've got your flywireless system or stabilization uh, system which consists of both of three axis gyros, three axis accelerometers. So it does have self-level stabilization if you want to use that, or you can just run off of the gyros and have a more traditional helicopter feel. Got our four blades mounted, got our tail fins mounted. Uh, before binding it, I thought we'd just do a weight check. So flying weight with the battery, 86 grams. Three ounces for Imperial folks. As a comparison to a much more powerful, this is the same size helicopter roughly. This is the T-Rex 150X, but it does have 120 millimeter blades. So this is a 120 uh, sized micro helicopter. Much more powerful. It's 2S powered. It's running a brushless tail motor, higher performance, full metal uh, components, bigger, stronger servos. And again, 2S powered, so twice the battery voltage, you know, and it's coming in at, you know, roughly the same weight, 84 grams, and it's only having to spin two blades, so a lot more efficient over, you know, the extra drag with the multi-bladed head. Uh, what I'm getting at here is, you know, these XK scale, heli micro scale helicopters, yes, you can fly them aerobatics, but, you know, they're not going to be, you know, high performance like one of these things. So, but they're a scale, and that's what they're meant to be flown as. So let's bind this thing up. If you get the ready-to-fly version that comes with the radio, you won't have to go through this. And feel free to skip ahead in the video until we're to the flight testing portion. If you get the uh, FTR or bind-and-fly version, you're going to have to do this. If you're pairing it to a Futaba radio or an OpenTX or any multi-protocol uh, system. So what we have to do is plug the battery in first to the helicopter. Just going to try to keep this all in frame. Now again, if you had the ready-to-fly version, when you do this, when you turn on your radio and plug the helicopter in, you should be getting a solid red light and a solid blue light, saying that it's communicating with the radio and the ESC is armed. But, uh, in this case, we're not getting that. We're just getting a flashing red LED indicating that it is not recognizing the radio. So we have to enter bind mode by pressing this little tactile switch in on the side. So you just hold it in until the red LED goes off. We're just going to go into model setup here, and we're going to go down to our RF selection. And this would be the same, of course, for any OpenTX. Uh, your display want, may look different, obviously, if you've got a different radio, but uh, the menu layout is the same. So, internal RF, we want to make sure that's off. And external RF, we want to turn that on, and we want to select the multi-protocol module. There it is. And we want to select the SFHSS protocol. There it is right there. It's binding. Red light is solid. Blue is on. Let's just uh, power it up. So we've got throttle control. Let's look at our swash plate. 
the swash plate's moving. High rates. And let's just confirm if everything looks right and everything's moving in the right direction. Uh, my pitch curve right now, it's at 50%. So midpoint on my pitch curve, I should be getting zero degrees of blade pitch. And if you move the blades side by side, you can kind of gauge that if they line up it means they're producing roughly zero degrees. This is pretty close. If we eyeball a blade edge on, it's got maybe just a tad of positive pitch, but for the most part we'll say that's zero degrees. Swash plate looks perfectly level um, front to back and side to side. Let's make sure it's working in the correct direction. We give forward cyclic stick, swash plate tilts forward, rearward cyclic tilts backwards. Uh, we can't really see it from this angle when we give it left. Swash tilts left, right swash tilts right. And tail rotor, this is going to be a little bit harder. We've got to... So when we give it right, right tail rotor stick, it's thrusting the tail to the left and the nose is turning to the right. So everything's working in the right direction. I'm just going to get the battery charging up. Just got our little USB charger plugged into a USB outlet. And we'll plug the battery in. And when it's charging, the little red light comes on. And as I said, this is a two-port charger, so if you have more than one battery, you can, of course, plug two in. Best part of a new heli is the Maiden. Uh, it was snowing earlier, so we're losing daylight fast. And it's cold as a gold digger's heart out here, but hopefully we can get some flight time in. The little uh, landing light, it comes on with throttle. So as soon as you give it a little bit of throttle, that's when that light comes on. Just going to spool it up, see how the tracking is. All the blades seem to be in track. No weird vibrations, so let's give it a go here. So, quite nicely trimmed. There's a slight breeze out here, but that pans off. And we're in uh, just the gyro stabilization. Don't have the self-leveling uh, accelerometer help on. What I can tell right off the bat, if you remember with the K123, it had a hard uh, right lean because of the left tail rotor translating tendency. This one doesn't have that left lean or right lean. It's got a little bit, but all helicopters will to counter the tail thrust. But uh, what this is doing Idle up one. is uh, it's making the coordinated banking turns much more symmetrical. They're a lot more even, both left and right. Now, right is still a little bit easier, a little bit more fluid. Let's see how the tail hold is. Just going to go into idle up, my full idle up mode. So, can't get the tail to blow out. It's working hard, but uh, it won't blow out doing some pitch pumps here. Hybrid three. And this is the. Uh, Okay, this, this is with dual rates turned off. You know, hopefully you can appreciate how reactive it is. Turn the tail rotor dual rate off, see how fast the pirouette rate is. Pretty fast, there's no pirouette compensation, which I wouldn't expect in something that's inexpensive. And it's got a pretty fast yaw rate. Better Let's see if we can do a loopy with it. Get it out here. Ooh, didn't blow out like the one, two, three did. Let's try that again. It bogs right down, but it'll do it. It can go inverted. Not too bad. Now ah, this tail hold on this one is better than the one two three. I'm impressed. I thought it would be worse with the four bladed head. I thought there'd be a lot more reactive torque. I'm just going to go back into low rates here, and we're just going to fly it scale like.
So, uh, yeah, I'd have to say this one does fly a little bit better. It's unbelievable. Heavier helicopter, more rotating mats than the rotors. But uh, it's pretty decent. So uh, we'll go inside, we'll go over the setup real quick, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, we'll go over my settings real quick for anyone who's interested. If you're not, just fast forward ahead. Go into our setup here and we'll cover our dual and exponential rates first. No surprise uh, when I've got dual rates turned off, 100% travel on all three channels, aileron, elevator, rudder. I'm running 50% exponential on all three as well to tame mid-stick response. If you're running a Futaba radio, they work in reverse. You'd need a negative, a negative value there. For my mid dual rate value, 75% on all three channels, running 30% exponential um, on aileron and elevator, and 40% on rudder found. Rudder is just a little more reactive off center stick. And for my really tame scale type flying, uh, lots of dual rate reduction, running 40% on aileron, elevator 35% even more and rudder 45% and running 10% exponential on aileron elevator and 25% on rudder again because it's a little more sensitive off-center stick. As far as my outputs go, if you run 100% with OpenTX, just too much travel, so you have to reduce that down. So I'm running 80% output on aileron and elevator, 90% uh, on throttle and rudder and channel 5, which is your mode selection, your flight mode selection. So whether you're running it in 3D uh, with just the gyros or there's 6G with the gyros and accelerometers. I've heard some people say this setting, like your output setting on channel 5 will dictate the gain. Didn't find that at all. I can turn that right down to 10% and didn't fly any differently at all. So gains are factory set and on that note they seem to be set up really well. Uh, I didn't have any tail shivers when it was no cyclic shivering or you know any porpoising while flying at speed the gains were set up really well from the factory and then channel six is the only kind of funny one here that was the one thing i really liked with the k123 was the mechanical setup was almost perfect i didn't have to play around with this much on this one i did at mid stick you know 50 percent on your pitch curve i was producing more positive i was producing maybe a degree of positive so i had to dial the centering position of channel 6 down so I was producing 0 degrees at 50% uh, on the curve and then I had to dial my low stick to 50, minus 50 and high stick to plus 60 to get a symmetrical collective range and I'm running roughly about uh, minus to plus 11, 12 degrees max and I just eyeballed that uh, by looking at the blade edge on through a clear protractor uh, you know, to get roughly between plus and minus 10 to plus and minus 12 degrees. You don't want to go any more because, you know, there's four blades on this thing. It's drawing lots of power. It's only 1S power and you'll bog it right down if you run much more than 12 degrees collective on either negative or positive. And lastly, my curves, uh, really quick throttle, uh, zero at low stick in my normal. So I can throttle down and then I go up to about 60% power, 65 and up to 70% power at full. My normal flying uh, throttle curve, 65 to up to 70 at mid and flat line to 70 to full stick. Gives, like I said, about a five minute flight if you manage your collective and cyclic energy or aerobatic type flying, running almost full power, 95%, 90, 95%. The reason I don't go 100 is I like keeping it just a little bit under so I've still got power at the end of the flight and I might not rob quite as much from the tail rotor if it needs it. Just my uh, observations though. And throttle hold, throttle curve of course 0% power so when you hit hold the helicopter powers down completely. For my pitch curves, normal I run about 0 degrees to about plus 8 uh, collective. Uh, Normal scale type flying, uh, minus two, minus three degrees, collective up to about plus eight. And then for aerobatic flying, uh, minus maximum, whatever that is on yours, minus 10, minus 12, up to plus 10, plus 12 uh, linear uh, pitch curve. And for throttle hold, I like producing zero degrees collective. I uh, just find 
you know, with micros when you're about to crash, if you hit throttle hold, it generally helps not release as much energy when you hit whatever you're going to hit. And I find when the blades are at zero degrees, uh, they tend not to strip the servos out quite as easy. Again, just my method and observations. Let's wrap this up with my final thoughts and some pros and cons. We'll start with the cons first. Biggest one is how difficult the front of the canopy is to uh, fit during battery changes. Uh, it's more difficult than the 123 is. I suppose if that's our biggest uh, niggle, we're doing pretty good. But there's just so much crammed in here. You've got the wiring for the light as well to worry about. You have to kind of make sure the wiring for the battery is tucked underneath when you're fitting this or there just won't be enough room up in the nose to slide it all the way on and getting everything lined up. And as it turns out, one time when I was doing a battery change, I was fitting it and I heard this snap and ping. And sure enough, I busted the uh, rare earth magnet off the right side, went flying into the abyss somewhere. This is a subjective point, but the color, you know, on little micros, I like really bright colors. They're easier to see. The dark blue with the dark windows. You know, you've got the white here and the red on the tail fin, which helps. But uh, certainly the one, two, three is easier to see when it's flying at distance. And, you know, little micro collective pitch helicopters, they fly quick and they get small fast. And like any micro short flight times, uh, you know, that's pretty standard. I was getting a maximum of five minutes that's flying very tamely with reduced power, really managing my collective and cyclic energy, taking the battery down to about 80% discharge state. Uh, flying at full power, probably two minutes uh, would be safe. I took it to 250 and yeah that's below 80 percent so two two and a half minutes flying at power doing light acro is about the best you can expect. As far as pros go the four bladed head is actually a pro in this case I uh, I said that was a con with the three bladed head on the one two three but in this case it's helping they seem to match the size of the blades perfectly for the amount of power available you know you don't have tons of power of course but uh, just enough that it's not producing tons of reactive torque. The tail rotor is keeping up, could not get it to blow out. And that extra spinning mass really seems to be helping with the tail rotor translating tendency induced lean. Very small amount of right lean, which is pretty amazing. The scale details, again, fantastic. Better than the 123 even. You know, of course, more fragile because of those details, but uh, if you like scale, yeah, this one's going to impress you. Just like the 123 video and photos just can't um, relate how good the detail is. You have to see it in person up close. The overall design of XK's helicopters is really good. The mechanical layout, the electronics are good. Pretty much tops in the micro collective pitch world. So top marks there and overall great value. You know, the ready to fly version around $130, $140. The bind and fly or FTR version around 100. You know, it wasn't long ago a little fixed pitch micro pod and boom cost more than that. So very impressive value. What I would like to actually see with all of uh, XK's line would be more more scales. I think a lot of people are getting into scale now. You know, we don't have the time to practice for 3D and scale flight. You don't, you know, you can fly maybe once, twice a month and still stay sharp. And that's what I like about scale, other than I love full-size helicopters. I would like to see XK come out with some two-bladed versions. You know, there's lots of great examples. Uh, you know, any of Bell's two-series helicopters, like the 204, the 206, the 212, 222, you know, an Airwolf, a 230, uh, even the 209, like the AH-1 Cobra, either in military or uh, the Red Bull version. Lots of cool possibilities there. Anyways, I want to thank Banggood again for sending me the uh, XKK124 to do the review on. And I will have product links below in the description for both versions, batteries. I would recommend getting a spare tail motor because cordless tail motors on these things seem to be the weakest link. They uh, are under quite a bit of strain. And if you're considering a K124, I hope this unboxing and review gave you a little more information on it. Cheers, folks. Happy flights.